So today, this morning, Friday morning, we are studying Ephesians uh, chapter 1. We, are, we begin with the introduction in our previous week. We'll make a few comments on that, and we will continue with our study together of the letter that Shaul Paul wrote to the Ephesian believers in the city of Ephesus. And that letter was really uh, circulated all around Asia Minor. So let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to bless the meeting, and then we'll read the first uh, uh, 14 verses of uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we just want to thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, who loved us and gave himself for us. We thank you that today we are blessed to be part of a forgiven a, a group of believers that have trusted in the Savior, in our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and have accepted him as our Lord uh, and Savior. So, Abba, our Father, bless your word. We pray in Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so please turn with me, brothers and sisters, to Ephesians chapter 1. In our previous week, uh, last week, we have already gave a general introduction, I should say uh, more or less like a detailed introduction uh, to who wrote that uh, letter and uh, the Apostle Shaul Paul. But let me read these uh, 14 verses of this uh, first chapter, and then we will continue on. Uh, verse by verse in the study of the book of Ephesians. I'm reading Ephesians 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, in Hebrew, Yeshua HaMashiach, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, in Mashiach Yeshua. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, in Messiah, in Mashiach, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise 
of his glory. And so here I read, beloved brothers and sisters, the first uh, uh, 14 verses of Ephesians uh, chapter uh, 1. Now, in our previous meeting together, our previous session together, we have really uh, presented before us all an introduction to the book of Ephesians. It was a long, uh, you might say, a long list of introduction, but we began by really reading only the first verse. I mean, we read the first 14 verses, but we have covered really the first verse, which begin with these words, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And that's where we uh, stop in our previous meeting together. It was very important for me to mention two things. Number one, to mention the, uh, the fact that Paul was a Pharisee, a parush in Hebrew, we, we say. He became a believer in the Lord Jesus the Messiah uh, after he was on the way to Damascus, where he wanted initially to capture any Jewish believer, Meshichi or Christian, any Hebrew Christian who believed that Jesus was the Messiah, Shaul, Paul, have gone, took letters from the spiritual leaders of Israel. He was on his way to, uh, uh, to Damascus to bring these Hebrew Christians and to capture them and to bring them into the land and actually to punish them because they have, as far as he was concerned, violated the truth of the God of Israel. And on the way, beloved brothers and sisters, it was fascinating to read uh, Acts chapter 9, where Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, called him, Shaul, Shaul, why are you persecuting me? And you remember what Shaul said, Who art thou, Lord? And then the Lord gave him the instruction what he was to do. You remember he was blinded. He needed to be taken. He went to the place, to the home of Hananiah. And then Hananiah, he was a Jewish believer in Damascus. And the Lord used him to uh, uh, give him the information concerning that which the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, has for him. And you remember what Hananiah was told by the glorified Christ, the glorified Messiah, that he will suffer many things for my name's sake, that Apostle Shaul Paul will suffer many things for the name of the Lord. And from there on, we continue in the book of Acts, and we saw how he was commanded by the local assembly in uh, in uh, uh, in Syria, in, uh, and he was from there commended to full-time ministry. The Spirit of God said uh, unto the believers in Antioch there, Antioch in Syria, to separate unto himself uh, uh, Shaul and Barnabas, and he began the three missionary journey, uh, during which time he also had arrived to the city of Ephesus, and was used by the Spirit of God to present the gospel message, first of all, initially in the synagogue, uh, in, the, uh, um, in, the, in the city of Ephesus, and then later on he went to, uh, to speak elsewhere in the markets and so on. And you remember, we, we've seen the maps of the three journeys of Shaul Paul and uh, how he have arrived to Ephesus and there, Ultimately, he was used by the Lord to form the local assembly in Asia a, a Minor in the city of Ephesus. And so he also warned uh, the believers, the elders in Ephesus, and he told them, look, after my departure, I know that there will be grievous wolves who will come. They will not spare the flock. I know what will happen even from among you, he said to them. And he gave them warning to feed the flock which belong unto God. And that's what is the responsibility of any one who minister the word of God is to feed, to preach the Messiah, to preach Christ, to minister the word of God to the saints, to the believers, wherever the Lord opened the door for the ministry of the word. And so we have given this introduction. So the writer is the Apostle Shaul Paul. 
He, will, he became a, a servant of the Lord, and now he's writing this uh, letter to the Ephesians uh, from Rome, where he was really imprisoned, and he's writing a few letters, including Colossians and Philemon and, uh, and, and so on, and he's writing words of instruction to the brothers and sisters in these local uh, churches, local assemblies in Asia Minor. Now, I want you to notice, beloved brothers and sisters, that this letter was written from Rome by Paul. As it began, we read Paul. And you notice that uh, the, the first verse calls him, he calls himself an apostle. An apostolos in the, in the Greek, in Hebrew, it is a, a shaliach. And an apostle is not an ordinary a, a brother, uh, that is serving the Lord. An apostle is one that has seen the glorified Christ after his resurrection, the resurrected Messiah, and also the one that have gone to be in glory. So the apostle Paul, while in his life, we don't read of him seeing the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, but here we see that he calls himself in a, an apostle and an apostle simply means one that was sent by God, by the Lord, with a mission. And he was uh, the one that was over and above when Judas was set aside. Matthias was chosen instead of Judas, Yehuda Ishkayot. And Shaul Paul was the 13th one, we might say, that was called by the Lord uh, from glory in Acts chapter 9, to go to serve him. So notice these uh, brothers and sisters, as verse 1 began, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, a messenger, an apostolos, a shaliach of Jesus Christ. And it is very important to see that because he was not sent by men. He was sent by the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, himself. This is beautiful to see how Paul is calling himself an apostle. An apostle. You will notice that he will call himself also as a servant in the, in the letters that he's writing, but here he calls himself an apostle, which uh, he sought to convey to the believers at Ephesus that he had an apostolic authority. To have an apostolic authority, not everyone had. There were those designated apostles that have an apostolic authority that none had, not even have today. And the reason that I mention this, because sadly in the days in which we live in today, there are some who claim to be an apostles during these last days of the church age. But an apostle is someone that was so that have seen the glorified Messiah, and uh, he was one of those that have seen him. And here we can see, beloved brothers and sisters, that he is calling himself an apostle. Now, before we are going to move forward, I want to mention that the whole book of Ephesians is divided basically into two sections. The first section, uh, dear brothers and sisters, has to do with doctrine. It is simply doctrine, teaching. Uh, it is very important to recognize biblical doctrine. We cannot change this doctrine. The doctrine that was given by the Lord, and therefore, chapter 1, uh, uh, verses 3, all the way to the end of chapter 3, we have doctrinal teaching that the apostle Paul is presenting before the local assembly at Ephesus doctrine concerning the spiritual possessions that we have in Christ, in the Messiah, and doctrine concerning the position, the spiritual, not only possession, but positions that believers in the Lord Jesus have. True believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, have an amazing possession that belong to us, but also an amazing position. We are in Christ, in Him, and we have a standing, a position 
because we belong to him, not because we have earned it, not because we have worked for that, but the possessions and the position was given to each and every one of us because of the grace of God when we have believed in the work of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, God have embraced us, gave us plenty of of possessions. We will talk about them, spiritual possessions, but also have given us spiritual position. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our standing is in Christ. This is important to see it. But then on the other hand, from chapter 4, all the way to the end of the sixth chapter. In other words, the second half of the letter that the apostle wrote to the Ephesians, there we don't have so much the, the, the riches of our possessions and position as we have it in the first three chapters. But from chapter 4 all the way to the end of the chapter, we have our responsibility as believers to walk here in a godly way in the world in which believe in, in which we live in. In other words, we don't only have our position, but we also need to have our practice. In light of our standing, we also need to have responsibility in our walk here in this world. If we belong to him in heaven, therefore, The apostle continued to speak to the Ephesians in chapter 4 and chapter 5 and chapter 6 to walk in unity, to walk in purity, to walk in harmony, and to walk in victory. If we belong to him, and if our standing is in Christ, and we have an amazing, beautiful possession and position in him, therefore we are to walk practically in unity, to walk practically in purity, to walk practically in harmony, and to walk practically practically in, a, in victory, to seek to have a victorious lives as believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. And so this is also important to place before us as we are uh, introducing this beautiful a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the brothers and sisters at Ephesus. In fact, I want to mention that there is one theme verse that is mentioned here in chapter 1. The theme verse of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, is found in Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse, in verse uh, 3. Let me read this verse. I'm jumping over the second verse for a moment. The, the Apostle wrote to the Uh, the brethren at Ephesus, and he reminded them. So beautiful. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, or more correct, every spiritual blessings in the heavenlies, or in heavenly places, in the heavenlies, in Christ. The theme verse of the book of Ephesians is really found in in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies, and it's all because of the Lord Jesus, the Mashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the theme, you know, to remind us, and this is so important to remember, beloved brothers and sisters, because God has blessed uh, all humanity in many ways. We have been blessed in having plenty to live in this world. We have, we have plenty of uh, food and we have plenty of, of, let's say we have been successful in one area or another in our lives. But the blessings that the believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, have is beyond time, beyond this our, our, our time that we live here upon the face of this earth because Uh, when time passes by and we have to leave this scene, this world, the blessing that the believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, have are eternal. They are not temporary blessing. They go beyond that which the Lord has blessed us here and the many mercies that he provides for us. You know, everyone can say in a world today, if he or she are honest, God has blessed me with 
with a good family. God has blessed me with a good husband and a good wife. God has blessed me with a good job. A God has blessed me with good children, obedient children. God has blessed me with material things here in this world. God has given me a good position in my in my uh, in my job or a good schooling. I have accomplished much here in this world. But this book, this letter that Shaul Paul wrote to the brothers and sisters in Ephesus and to you and I and all believers takes us beyond this world. In other words, it tells us of the blessings of God that carry through beyond this world. The blessings of the unbeliever in this world it will end when he or she die. But the, for the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the blessings of the believers go beyond this world. It is an, it, it, the blessings are eternal, and it is in the heavenlies. It is linked with the glorified Savior who is at the right hand of God, who has finished the work of redemption, our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. So the theme verse of the book of Ephesians is Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies, and it is in Christ, in the Mashiach. Now, if you remember, beloved brothers and sisters, we just finished the study of the book of Joshua. And we have seen that um, uh, God have allowed our forefathers, the people of Israel, to journey through the wilderness after bringing them out of the land of Egypt to help them, the new generation, to cross the Jordan River and to enter into the promised land. Let me just remind you, if you turn to Joshua chapter 21, just for a moment, I want to uh, refer to this uh, to these verses which we learned together in our Bible study of the book of Joshua, we read all the way to, we ended the chapter of the book of, the whole book of Joshua, all the way to the end of chapter 24. But in chapter 21 and verse 43, 44 and 45, we did read verse 43 of Joshua chapter 21, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land, which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There fail not aught of any good things which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel, all came to pass. You remember we read these verses in Joshua chapter 21, verses 43, 44, and 45. But beloved brothers and sisters, we also saw that while God was faithful to his own people, Israel, Israel had to be responsible to possess the land that God had given to the nation of Israel, which he promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was faithful to his promises to bring them into the promised land of Canaan. But Israel had to be responsible to take possession of the land that God had given to them. They are to enjoy spiritually relationship with God and practically to take possession, to fight the fight, and to be faithful, to obey the Lord and to enjoy the promised land that God had given to them. But we do know that Israel failed. Israel never possessed all the land that God had given to them because Israel violated, disobeyed God, and did not fully took possession of all the land 
which was much larger than what it is today in the year in which we live in. So the lesson is tremendous because what happened in Israel's history teach the believers in the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach and the Lord Jesus Christ today spiritual lessons for us because just as Israel, God have made promise to the church, to the body of Christ. And you remember what we did read, that God blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus. In other words, the promise of being with the Lord in heaven is sure. Once we will leave this scene or the rapture will come, we will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Uh, or, or the dead in Christ, but those which are alive will be raptured to be with him. But until we arrive to glory, to heaven, to be with the Lord, we are here living in this world, and we are also as believers are called to be obedient and faithful, spiritually minded, submissive to the Lord in order to enjoy these spiritual blessings today, while we are walking here in this world, waiting the day that the Lord will take the believers to be with Him in heaven. Now, in reality, we will say as well that the church as Israel also failed. And you and I in our own life are also oftentimes fail, but the call remained the same. That God, through His Word, in the power of the Spirit of God, are calling us, the believers today, to seek to live in the light of the blessing that the Lord has blessed us. So, what is the lesson about Israel? We learn that from the land of Canaan is really not a picture of heaven, but the land of Canaan is a picture of the heavenly blessings which we can enjoy today if we are submissive to the Lord. And why do I say that the land of Canaan is not a type and a picture of heaven? Because Israel never had fully rest in the land of Canaan. They constantly had warfare and conflict. As you and I, always have conflict in our lives as believers here in this world. The question is, do we submit to the Lord? Do we live in a light of the position that we have or not? When we don't, we stumble and fall. But when we do, we are successful to have spiritual uh, uh, um, growth and enjoy the spiritual blessing that the Lord has for us. So I want you to notice that in the land of Canaan, Israel had conflict. Israel had failure. Israel also at time had victory. Israel, when they submitted to the Lord, had rest. And Israel, when they were obedient to the Lord, had possession of their land. But when they were not, they could not enjoy victory, they could not enjoy rest, and they could not enjoy their possession. In fact, beloved brothers and sisters, the reason in our study of the book of Daniel that the Lord had to bring Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC to take the Jewish people to Babylon is because Israel did not have victory and obedience to the Lord, and they turn away from the Lord, and the Lord disciplined them, and he did not give them to enjoy their possession, which is theirs by divine design. Same thing for us today. When we submit to the Lord, the Lord gives us to enjoy the possession, the spiritual blessing that he has for us, but when we don't, we will not enjoy that uh, possession and that uh, a spiritual blessing. If you will just go a little bit further in our chapter, chapter one, and I'm just still in the course of the introducing of this um, book of Ephesians. In verses, notice Ephesians 1 and verses, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 uh, and on. Notice what we read in Ephesians 3 and verse 14. The apostle Paul 
was praying for the Ephesians believers. He told them that they had been blessed with every spiritual blessings, but now he's praying for them because apparently they did not enjoy, or at least were not in a full sense of that which the Lord have called us to call them to be. That's why we read in verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole or every family in heaven and in earth are named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with with might by his spirit in the inner man. He continues, he's he's praying for the beloved beloved brethren in Ephesus. In verse, uh, uh, um, verse 17, that Christ the Messiah will dwell in your hearts by faith that ye been rooted and grounded in love, that ye may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height, and that you will know the love of Christ, the love of the Mashiach, which passes knowledge. He gives us the list here of his prayers for the saints. Now, if they have fully enjoyed it, there was no need for the Apostle Paul to pray for them in that sense because they were already entered into all this position that they had. But apparently the Apostle Paul was praying on their behalf before the Lord. And he's praying, he was praying for the believers, whether it is in uh, in Colossae or whether it is in Thessalonica, or whether it is in, Eph- in Ephesus or in, in Philippi and so on. He always prayed on behalf of the people of God and we also need to pray on behalf of God's people. So you notice that there was a need that they will enter into the position and possess what belonged to them, and therefore the apostle Shaul Paul prayed uh, for them in Ephesians chapter 3. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, beloved brothers and sisters, and there the Apostle Paul continued, what, notice what he writes in verse um, uh, 16, uh, if, if there will be no conflict for us here in this world, there was no need for us to put the whole army of God. We will get to it when we will arrive to chapter 6. But here, as we are introducing this epistle, Paul says in verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 6, he says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, apparently the wicked, namely Satan, he still shoots fiery darts at God's people. And oftentimes, if we are honest, we find ourselves, you might say, stumbling and failing, and the Satan is a is a if is a liar. He's the accuser of God's people. He's causing us, he's seeking to cause God's people to stumble and to fall and and not to follow the Lord. He is a, a, as we read here. He's shooting darts in order to harm the spiritual growth of the people of God. If you go a little bit further in. A, In chapter 6, at the end, Shaul Paul says in verse 23, Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, the apostle Paul wanted that there will be shalom, peace, and love among the people of God. That was the aim of the apostle Paul. And so as he was sending this letter, In view, he had in mind that God's people will understand their riches in Christ, in Messiah, their possession and their position, but also that they will be aware that they need to walk in a godly way. They have responsibility to walk in unity, to walk in purity, to walk in harmony, and also to walk in victory. And that is the division of the true uh, two uh, chapter uh, two sections of the book of uh, Ephesians. So now let's go back to our 
uh, chapter 1. And let's uh, just move along here. You notice that the first part of, of verse 1, it is really the author is the Apostle Paul. Now notice, brothers and sisters, is something that is very interesting. He calls these brethren, the Ephesians, and he called you and I as believers. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, noticed by the will of God. We noticed that earlier, that it was not, he was not sent by man. It was God who sent him. Uh, the book of Galatians, he mentioned the fact that he was not sent by man. It was by the will of God. The Lord Jesus, the Messiah, called him and sent him and called and made him an apostle, apostolos, shaliach, a messenger to the Gentile world. And notice what he's calling the brothers and sisters to whom he write, he's saying, he's saying, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints, which are at Ephesus. Now, this is important word, saint. The word saint is hagios in the Greek, and in Hebrew is kadosh or kdoshim. It simply means that the persons that have come to know the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, as their Lord and Savior, they are now set apart. The word hagios, the word kadosh or kdoshim, uh, simply means a uh, set apart for God, set apart for the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. In other words, every true believer, positionally, and I want to distinguish this, uh, positionally, we are all saints. I remember reading about a brother that went uh, to one of the streets. I think it was, I think it was uh, Brother Harry Ironside, who was also uh, working among the Jewish people. He was uh, uh, living in Chicago and ministering there in Chicago. He went to one of the uh, to one of the uh, underground and so on in Chicago, wherever he was, uh, in the bus and so on. And he he asked the people there. He says, "Have you ever seen a saint?" And they said, no, 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 we never seen a saint. And he asked them, do you want to see a saint? And he said, sure, we'd like to see a saint. And he said, here, I am a saint. Now, in other words, he said, you can see a saint. But brothers and sisters, you see what he wanted to convey to people and to convey to us all. And what the Apostle Paul wants to convey to us is that every one of us who belong to the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, we are saints. And I'm emphasizing the, the fact that we are not saints often. Often we are not saints practically, but we are saints positionally. God has set us God has set the believer in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and I, I'm emphasizing the true believer, the one that have accepted that he or she are sinners by nature, and that God, the Son, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, took union with humanity, became a man, and died for the sin of this world. He was buried and he rose again for our justification. And everyone that believes on him is positionally a saint, set apart to God. And so even though the Ephesians had their own issues and own needs, like you and I have our own needs, yet positionally they were saints. And you notice this, I just wanted to, to mention here that he used that word for saints quite a few times in the book of Ephesians. If you turn to verse 4, you notice in verse 4 we read, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be known as holy. Notice the word holy, same word, holy without a, a blame before him in love. In other words, we are holy positionally. We are saints positionally. A little bit later in verse 13 and verse 15 and verse 18 of our chapter, notice in verse 13, chapter 1, Paul continues and he says, in whom ye also trusted 
after that he heard uh, of the word of the of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then he continued, and he said, verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Notice once again, he's using that word saints here in this chapter. Verse uh, 15 he used it, and verse 18, notice that verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Notice again, he used the word saints once again. In fact, uh, in the list that I have before me, the Apostle Paul used the word saints in chapter 1, verse 1, 15 and 18, in chapter 2 and verse 19, in chapter 3 and verse 8 and 18, in chapter 4 and verse 12, in chapter 5 and verse uh, and verse uh, 3, and chapter 6 and verse Eighteen. It is really fascinating. Notice chapter 6 for a moment with me, please. Chapter 6 and verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And so, dear brothers and sisters, Every true believer is positionally a saint. Positionally, and I'm emphasizing this because practically it is another story. Again, I don't know if you remember the brother who said, uh, uh, he says, Oh, to dwell with saints above, that will be glory. But how to dwell with saints below? This is another story. In other words, we here on earth is where we need to behave as saints. When we are going to be with the Lord Jesus, the Messiah in heaven, we will never have the problem with our um, behavior anymore because we will not be, we'll have no sin nature any longer. But it is here and now that we need the Lord to help us in our practical behavior, but praise God. Verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, messenger of God, sent by the Lord Jesus the Messiah. He said, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. And we can say with the apostle Paul, to the saints which are in any place in the world in which we live in. Every true believer is a saint uh, that belong uh, to the Lord Jesus, uh, the Messiah. You know, I'm reminded of the verse in the book of 1 Corinthians. Please turn with me to 1 Corinthians 1. You remember we have studied the whole book of 1 Corinthians. And we have had a long discussion and long study of the first letter to the Corinthian. And we have seen that the Corinthian had so many problems. There were divisions among them. They were proud and arrogant. There were immorality in Corinth. They took each other to court. There were an issue with divorces and remarriage. There was a, a there was a problem with how to with the a, a misusage of the gifts. There was lack be, of belief in the resurrection of the Messiah, and on so on and so on and so on. The whole book of Corinthians is a corrective ministry to a local assembly at Corinth that had so many problems, and yet, positionally, the true believers were called saints. Notice this, First Corinthians chapter one. In verses 1 and 2, Paul called an apostle of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMashiach, through the will of God and through Thanes, 
a brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ, called saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. They are called, you notice it says in a, in a, in a King James, the word to be, it shouldn't be there. The word to be is in italic. They are called saints. Positionally, they were saints. But practically, beloved brothers and sisters, there was a, you would look at them and you would say, and you call them saints? Well, that's how sad it is when God's people who believe in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, do not, you might say, rise up to some small measure. And we can apply this to ourselves. None of us is exempt from that. We need the Lord to help us to uh, uh, live in a way that is uh, pleasing to the Lord. But nevertheless, beloved brothers and sisters, the Ephesians are called saints. The Corinthians were called saints. And you and I are called saints. And the Lord knows the heart of those who truly belong to him. While we cannot, we can look at one another and we can say, this one is not a believer, and this one is a believer, and this one is not, and this one is. We are not the one who knows the heart, but God knows the heart. And those that belong to him are positionally saints. And so back to this Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul an apostle, not a, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading in, a, in Galatians, but I meant Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus, and notice he added the word, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That word faithful is not a different group of people, no. They were saints and they were faithful. They were saints and they were faithful because they have believed on the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. They were called to be also practically faithful. The Lord will deal with it. Paul will deal with it in chapters 4, 5, and 6. But they are saints and faithful. They are saints and faithful in a sense that they are set apart because of their faithfulness in that fact that they have become uh, believers in the Lord Jesus. They have accepted him as their Lord and Savior. So what is a saint? A saint is one that is a believer in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. What is a saint? Is a saint is a person that is no longer part of this world. John 17, verse 14, 15, and 16, the Lord Jesus said that we do not really belong to the world, even though that we are here, but we are not of this world. In fact, I want you to turn to John 17 for a moment. A little bit more, we have a little bit more time. John 17, and verse 14, 15, and 16. These are the words of the Lord when he prayed in his prayer when he was just about to approach the garden of Gat Shmanim, the garden of Gethsemane. The Lord in his prayer said in verse 14, I have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Listen to this. They are not of the world. The believers in the Lord Jesus are not of the world. They were here with him on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane, but Yeshua said they are not of the world, as even as I am not of the world. Verse 15 tells us, and 16, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the, <coughs> that thou should give them from the evil. And verse 16, he continued, and he said, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So, 
a saint is one that really not belong to this world. Oh yes, the believers are here, as long as they are here alive, we are all here, but positionally, we belong to another world, we belong to God, we belong to the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. So, what is a saint? A saint is one who is a believer in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. A saint is one that is not belong to this world positionally, he is out of this world. And also, listen to this, what is a saint? A saint is one who is indwelt by the person of the Holy Spirit of God. A saint is one who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, the apostle Shaul Paul was writing to the brethren at Rome. And he said to them, listen to this. In verse 9, he wrote and he said, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If or since, so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. <clears throat> you notice this, beloved brothers and sisters? If anyone is not having the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in him or in hell, they do not belong to the Lord. The person of the Holy Spirit of God must indwell in true believers. And these believers are people who have accepted Christ. They've accepted the, Mash the Mashiach. And that's why they are called saints. So if we will just sum it all up with respect to what is a saint, basically we have three thoughts that I presented before you. Number one, a saint, a kadosh, a person uh, that is hagio or hagios, plural, one who is a believer in the person of the Lord Jesus the Messiah, one who is no longer belong to the world positionally, even though in the world we, we are in this world today practically, and one that has the person of the Holy Spirit of God indwelling him or her. If a person is not a believer, he will never receive the person of the Holy Spirit of God. We, one must be born again, born of the Spirit of God, born from above. Uh, for us who speak Hebrew, lehivaled mechadash, it's a born again, to be born of the Spirit of God. That is a saint. And you and I who are believers in the Lord Jesus are saints and are calling, called here saints and faithful. And it is all by the grace of God who have brought us to uh, himself. So, brothers and sisters, just to continue with the few minutes that we have left, in verse 2, I just want to mention a verse 2, because in verse 2, the Apostle Shaul Paul wished for the believers two things. He wished to them, uh, to, to him to have, to have grace, and he wished for them to have peace. Notice, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he's writing to the brothers and sisters in Ephesus, and he's including in this letter the wish and the longing for them to have a grace, in Hebrew it's called chesed, and not only that, but also peace, the word shalom. And that is amazing because as he's writing to them, telling them what they are positionally, that they belong to the Lord, they are saints, they are set apart for God, they are faithful because they believed. Now he's wishing to them to have the grace and the peace that come from God our Father, Elohim Abba, God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah who came from heaven to give his life in order to provide for us uh, eternal uh, salvation. 
This is what the Apostle Paul, that is how he's starting, beloved brothers and sisters, the instruction, the doctrinal instruction, first of all, that he's about to give to the believers at Ephesus, and then he's always followed with practical application for them in their life. And how it is important for us, brothers and sisters, if we don't know the 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 doctrinal truths that are found in the Word of God, we will never be able to practice in some small measure that for which the Lord has called us uh, uh, to be. And all this we can only attain in some small measure as we are in fellowship with the Lord and we are walking with Him. So let me conclude for this ministry meeting, for this Friday morning Bible class, once again, verses 1 and 2, I'll reread them so we can close the meeting for this uh, session. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, from our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. May the Lord help us as we move along uh, uh, one step at a time with the study of the book of Ephesians. May the Lord help us to appreciate who the Lord Jesus is, what He has done for us, and also to be stirred up to continue to follow Him uh, here in this world. So what we will do now, we will close the meeting in prayer and we will turn off the live session and those of you that are here with us over Zoom will have some time together with questions and answers. So let's pray. Let's ask the Lord uh, to bless what has been said. And so Abba, our Father, we want to thank you once again for the privilege of being under the sound of thy word. Thank you for the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians. We ask your blessing upon everyone that is listening, that we will all be edified, we pray. So we give you thanks, and we ask it in Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll say shalom, shalom until the next meeting together.